In the past, I've had many days where I've sat in front of my computer, staring at that empty code file. I wanted to start a new programming project, but after just a few lines of code, I would immediately get distracted and I would close my laptop and go scroll through some questionable content on Instagram instead. Fast forward to today, I've got to the point where I can consistently code for 70 plus hours every single week without even burning out and with 100% Focus. So while you absolutely don't need to code this much to get results, coding is one of those things where the pace of your progress literally comes from the pace of how much practice are you able to and willing to put in on a daily basis. So the ability to work a lot of hours is really the only way to get results in the beginning. It's boring, but it's true. So I like to think of learning to code as like a bridge. On one side, you have your current situation. And on the other side of this bridge, you have your dream job. And in between stands a lot of work. But there's something that prevents us from doing this work. And I call that resistance. Through years of systematically learning about my mind, my body and my brain, I have learned how to break through this resistance and keep programming for hours on end without losing focus and without getting burnt out. And I've identified three main strategies and habits that have allowed me to do that. But before I tell you what those are, let's talk about what is not the solution. And that is motivation. Like be honest, how many times have you watched some video with some inspirational music and motivational storytelling from some dumbass YouTube guy on YouTube and got really motivated for like one day and then instantly just gone back to your old habits straight after that. I've certainly done that a lot of times in my life. So that is why you need something entirely different to push through the rest of this 70 to 80% of resistance and it's called discipline. So here are the four strategies that I use to remain disciplined to my work even when I don't feel motivated to do it. So let's say you sit down to work and the task ahead of you is let's say completing five lead code problems perhaps by using the lead code prep bank inside of my notion template developers brain link down below <clears throat> in your mind the work probably feels like pushing a heavy object across your room and you're having a tough time getting started because the work ahead of you just feels so overwhelming and it feels like there's so much of it ahead. But luckily for us, there's one simple realization that for me made beating this initial resistance so much easier. It's much harder to start working than to keep working. The reason this happens is that once we start working, our brains enter something called flow. I'm sure now that you think about it, you know the feeling. You know the feeling of being completely absorbed in your work and what you're doing and it suddenly makes time just fly past without you even noticing. So a way more accurate way to think of work is not as pushing an object across a flat surface, but like pushing it down a mountain. It's really tough to get it moving, but once it gets moving and it starts rolling through that mountain, it becomes so much easier because you're just using the sheer force of gravity. In practice, I recommend something called the five minute rule. When I struggle to get started, I will simply tell myself that I will just work on this for five minutes. That's, that's all I'll do. That way, the total work that I need to do seems so much less daunting. So I get the object moving, but in reality, once it starts moving and I enter the flow state, it just starts rolling through without me having to even put in much extra effort at all. But there's a catch. If you stop focusing on your work, and if you stop working for even a moment, it stops the object from moving. Continuing to work is only effortless as long as you keep working. But if you leave the flow state, you need to go through this initial resistance all over again. This is why I always divide my work days into specific one to three hour long deep work blocks. By doing those blocks, I allow nothing to distract me. But then outside of them, I allow myself to take breaks. This way, instead of having to work through this resistance to get started 12 times during the day, I might only have to do it like three times a day and in turn it allows me to work much longer without really having to put in much more effort at all. Okay, so technically that is how you do the work, but if it was that easy, we just had to do this like one technique, a lot more people would not be struggling with this. Like the issue here is not that you don't know what to do. Like you know you should be coding more projects. You know that you should be doing more lead code practice. So why don't you do those things? Well, for me, and I think for a lot of you as well, there's one like blocker in our minds that often prevents us from doing that work. 
And to understand that, I want to tell you a story. So before I got into coding and content creation and used to work at a bank, at a corporate bank, it was really long hours and just a really like brain draining work that I just absolutely hated. And doing it, I came to the conclusion that the only way for me to enjoy my life was to find a career where I could work less because I just hated working so much. But in reality, that was actually the wrong lesson to take away from that experience. But the right lesson was not that I hated work. It was that I was doing the wrong kind of work. I was doing work that I did not enjoy. Like somehow society today has got this idea that working a lot is bad. Like I think this only applies if you're doing work that you're not really passionate about doing. But if the work that you do is something that you enjoy, like work is just like, like the concept of work-life balance doesn't really exist anymore because the work that you do is also life for you. So you just have a life life balance because everything you do is something that you actually want to do. And look, I get it. Like life is still more than work. Like, of course, there's a lot of other things that you should be doing in your life than just working. For example, right now I'm filming this video out of a hotel room here in Bangkok, Thailand, where we're spending a month. And of course, while I'm here, I'm not working 12 hours every single day when I'm in Thailand. But for most of my weeks, I do work that much because I actually want to. A lot of burnout just comes from having stress. It just comes from being really stressed about what you're doing and like hating what you're doing. So for me, a lot of it is just finding work that you enjoy and then having a mindset shift towards like thinking that doing a lot of work is okay. It's not bad, at least for some periods of your life. And by the way, some of this enjoyment just happens naturally as you get better at the thing. When you suck at something, it's really hard to enjoy. So if you're coding right now or whatever you're doing and you don't really enjoy it, I would say just giving it a bit of time to get yourself good at it. Like you would be surprised how much you start liking something once you get really, really good at it. On to strategy three. So everything we're talking about here is really about creating systems in your mind and in your life to make doing the work more effortless. So the third strategy that I use and that I wish I started using much sooner is to have a digital system to organize my work and to have some sort of a second brain to make doing the right actions and habits automatic. And that is why I created Developer's Brain. It's a Notion template that allows you to track your work tasks, to design your deep work blocks, to track the courses that you're doing and take notes from them all in one place and to organize your coding projects with step-by-step -step instructions on how to get started and instructions on the right practices to actually build a great projects with lots of tools and templates for the things that I use when I build my project myself. But really, it's really more than a Notion template. Basically, what I did was I listed down all the problems that I went through when I myself was learning the code and what I also most commonly see in the comments down below. And then I thought to myself, what could I add to this product that could solve as many of these problems as possible. And that is exactly what I did. And that is why, just to name a few examples, inside there is an interview prep guide with a bank of 75 of the most important lead code questions that if you just practice, you will be able to pass coding interviews. By the way, with solutions as well and full guides on like how to solve these problems and things like this. We've got resume templates to fix a problem of not having a resume that has a high chance of passing automatic screening software and generally landing interviews. It has full tailor-made roadmaps to follow to learn to code from zero based on the type of developer you want to become like a python developer a data scientist a full stack javascript developer whatever you want so you can either build a system like this for yourself which is also fine or if you want to have access to it right now with all of this and a lot more right away you're going to find developer's brain from the first link in the description down below and you can also use the code full stack 23 for a discount if the code is still active when you're watching this not sure how long i'll have that code active for but even after all of this and even though i just talked about like the importance of enjoying your work and being passionate about it you cannot escape the fact that sometimes the work will just suck. Like I would be lying if I told you that I have loved every moment of building the MVP of our startup, which is by the way, almost done right now, which I'll be excited to share soon. Given how technically challenging what we're building is, there have been so many moments when we just got stuck on some stupid configuration issue or getting a damn Mac application notarized and approved by Apple, I 
don't understand why they made that process such a freaking nightmare. And through all of these moments, the one thing that kept me going was honestly not some productivity hack or just enjoying the process because honestly, I did not enjoy all of these moments. Sometimes coding well and truly does absolutely suck. <laughs> but it was the realization that doing hard things is hard, comma, and that is okay. In today's society, I think we have gone way too soft. Like, we expect life to be comfortable. Modern society is literally built upon making life as easy and comfortable as possible. From instant access to pictures of supermodels on Instagram, to an insane abundance of calorie-filled, highly palatable foods, is no wonder that we got used to things being really easy. And of course, as a whole, all of this is freaking great. Like, I love all of these things. I love easy access to travel. Like, I'm here in Thailand right now. It's freaking great. I love great food. I love safety because it's these things that allow me to focus on these higher order problems, like doing work that fulfills me or making these dumb YouTube videos on the freaking internet. But this makes us forget how we got to this age of abundance and pleasure in the first place, which was through lots and lots of blood, sweat, and tears is caused by hard work that often absolutely sucks. And the key to being able to do this kind of hard work for 70 or however many hours you want is realizing that it's okay that things are sometimes hard. Like, I don't know why I need to say this. Somehow I just do. You won't die. It's supposed to be hard. And that is why it's valuable. Like if you just sit around doing nothing, like many of you live, like admit it to yourself, it might feel great in the moment. But as a whole, your life probably doesn't feel that inspiring if you live like that. So paradoxically, the best way to live a fulfilling life in the long term is by embracing discomfort, by constantly raising the bar for yourself and achieving more and more difficult challenges. That is why I can work 70 hours a week and never burn out. Or maybe, maybe I'm just a bit crazy. I definitely am. Thanks for watching. So you need to do the hard work. But we want to remember that at the same time, we want to find strategies to obviously make things easy for us as well. For example, with learning to code, unfortunately, most people make it way too hard for themselves when there's actually much easier ways to do this. And that is exactly why I made this video where I go through the fastest way, the absolute fastest way to learn to code from zero and actually get hired at the end of it. I think it's absolutely crucial that you watch this video next before you do anything because you could be making one of the absolutely massive mistakes that I also talk about in this video. So I'll see you there.